This is the Friday Student Government Council meeting, um, December 1st, 2023. Um, we'll start with attendance. Start with three of you. Uh, William Coates present. Michael Warner present. Uh, Hunter Casillas present. Danny Palacios present. Kristen Nairgaard present. Online folks. Naomi present. Re present. Re Barco. Gabe Trujillo present. And Matthew Rathlin present. Um, so I'll just read our mission really quick is to support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interests to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Has everybody had a chance to look over the agenda today? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do we approve it? Do, do we have form to approve it? Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. We have nine. Ten, nine. nine. We have nine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, we didn't yeah. realize. Sorry, I'm a little tired today. Um, nothing. Um, if okay, one thing. In two weeks is graduation. If we choose to have a meeting in two weeks, I will not be there because graduation is a whole day event. Um, and the trustees are on that board for all day. So um, I don't think we should have a meeting in two weeks because that'd be basically finals week and break. Um, but so graduation is in two weeks, so I'll be there and then I hop on a plane to South Carolina. So okay. Thank you. Would we need to? If we don't want to do it during that week, would we need a motion or vote on that? Um, technically, I mean, it's not the agenda, but we would motion to like, hey, we would we, honestly, what we should do is have a, a resolution that declares a fall, a winter recess. All right. And then we pick a date, January 5th. All right. So All right. eventually that should be done by someone in this council this week. Okay. All right. Because Dr. Brown also mentioned she's not here, but she'll take us out to. Like lunch next week or something. Okay. So in place of a meeting. Uh, um, say Kat, Kristen or Gabe. Um, on my end, we haven't met since uh, last Friday when we had the um, special meeting. Um, we're working on uh, hammering out our current meeting time. Um, and aside from that, we are tracking uh, the update that you sent to Gabe and I to hopefully bring up at the next meeting about the RTV station. Um, and if, there, if there's anything else that you guys want Gabe and I to bring up with say out at the next meeting, please let us know as soon as you can so that we can reach out to make sure about that. Uh, Gabe, did you have anything else? Nope, Kristen got it all. I did have a question though, because um, Leo from CCD student government said their like advisor quit. Um, yes, I did. I, I don't know if you got a chance to read it a little bit more closely than I did. She left pretty uh, rapidly um, or pretty unexpectedly because she hadn't said anything about it on the meeting on Friday, but they have at this point replaced her. Okay. Um, and we have been put in contact with the new ex officio for them. So they should, so they should be able, there might be a little hiccup, but they'll be able to run forward. Yes, pretty right. much. Okay. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I just want to check in on that. Yes. Um, I mentioned this to Mitchell, your as chair. Um, CCD is having some difficulties with their student government, and I mentioned this to Mitchell, and I'm gonna mention this to you too. Um, you, are you guys still having problems with quorum? Um, they, we we did talk about this at the special meeting, and essentially what it comes down to is we're gonna have to change our meeting time because the Tuesday meeting time does not work for the CCD people it seemed like at all um they didn't join say cab until kind of like the middle of the semester a little bit too which I don't really think is their fault I think there were issues like sourcing say cab representatives for that um so we're, we're trying to be more accommodating for them at this point um and trying to like get them included but unfortunately um I know it's not Armando's favorite thing in the world but um, we're trying to move back to, it looks like the Friday meeting time. 
so that everybody can show up and then we hopefully will not have that issue anymore. Okay, cool. And it looks like John is here. I, too. I was about to bring that up. Cool. Um, just putting that out there though, if it gets to a point where like say one of the reps isn't as good the most of the semester, it might be worth removing them because that lowers your threshold core. So I'm just putting that out there for you guys because I know you guys had some issues. I'm just going to bring that to the chair eventually. So. Yeah, I think that, uh, again, I would say that the, the two people that ended up joining later on in the semester, um, kind of, like it was more that they had issues with like sourcing them. And I think it'll be like fixed later on. Like I don't necessarily think it's going to be a problem. And then I just wanted, for the record, John, if you want to reference you're here, I mean, I did mute you. John, I did mute you, so you're going to have to unmute yourself. Oh, OK. I'm at the GSSB building because I didn't know if the place had the location changed. So I wanted to sign in remotely, let y'all know I'll be there momentarily. I'm on my way in person. All right. Sounds okay. good. Thank you. Um, and then Judiciary Committee, Reed. Yep. Let me just start with saying it's accountability. If we can change that in the agenda, that would be fantastic from now on that you all voted for, or many of you voted for. Um, there was, Armando had sent out kind of an acknowledgement and a, a recounting of the rules and things that we all abide by. And so I think, um, I had asked if we could get together, and I hope we will, um, if he's able to, or and or Dr. Barone early next week on campus, if we if we get together Monday or something, so that we can make strides about, um, I don't know if reconciliation is a word, but also just restorative steps that we can put in place to for some of our members who are not participating and have not been participating and what the what the prospects are for that. I'll just say that generally to get going. That's it. That's all I have right now. I'll be back on campus early next week in the weekly so we can connect on Monday and Tuesday for sure. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you. And then um yeah Mike the new quick question slash statement. You kind of addressed it, Reed. Um but yeah I definitely wanted to see where the progress was on that because I spy with my little eye, two members who haven't been here in all month. So I definitely want to see where, if the if movement had been made on that and whether the council or members of the council should step in um, sooner rather than later. Um, I think, if there had been, so. right. And I think that that letter that Armando, that email that Armando sent all of us was a kind of a first step toward um, letting people know that things are happening. Um, obviously, we can't know if, if the, our friends and members are watching these recordings to know what's happening, but I have to assume maybe they're not considering the last vote we had. So we're good. We're good together early next week, and then we'll have a report. We'll make either movement or report to you as soon as we've met. Okay, for everyone. Sounds good. Thank you, Ree. You're welcome. So I also had a question for you, Ree. Yeah. Uh -huh. With all of that going on, mm -hmm. when are we planning on voting who's on the committee? Um, well, I get to assign those roles and I have already right. asked to member according to the rules. And oh. I had sorry, I didn't report that to you, but I had asked for Gabe and Kristen right. to serve and I haven't gotten a negative response from them. Gabe has said yes. Kristen has not given me a final word whether she will or not. Sorry, I, I meant to email you back. I am totally on board with that. Okay, thank you. So that is for the rest of this year, the committee. All right, so are the three of you trying to meet with our advisors next week then? If we three of us can, and if not, then I'll report to them, and then we'll have a report for the rest of the council based on what's decided and and any movement we make toward you know trying to restore things. Hey, right, sounds good. I just wanted to check in on that. Thank you for that because I had not said that, so I appreciate that, Matt. Anything else for me? That's it for me. Unless anybody has any other questions. Doesn't look like it. Okay, thanks, y'all.
the budget committee? Uh, yeah, so, you know, considering that we um, changed the structure of like budget committee and everything, so I'm going to be creating a chat next week so we can um, come up with an agreement on what day to be for the following semester. And then aside from that, we're also going to be doing a little bit of uh, even not restructuring, but we're going to move some numbers around in the budget. So looking at some of the committees that don't or aren't using any of their funds, so we're going to distribute it to the other committees. And um, yeah, um, I'm going to be reaching out to a few uh, council members to see if they're willing to be my co-chair for or the culture, right? Vice chair. The vice chair for the budget committee. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. All right. Um, then it goes on to PR committee. Um, so for PR committee, our big thing is food for finals right now. Um, I have reached out to the caterers, and massage therapists. Um, I've been building out the order to Sam's Club, the flyers, um, the spaces books. Did you have something, Mike? Oh, okay. Um, so I did send around a, I sent out a sign up sheet in the group chat. Um, if everybody could fill out their times, you can just put an X at the times that you're available, um, just so we can get that. Um, and that's really it right this second. Maybe a mic. Um, I need you to do this and send out a calendar invite. Okay. And um, do you so and make like a sign up sheet and make sure everyone gets sign up sheet has been sent out. Yeah, it was in the group chat. Oh, okay. Um, but just make sure it's like a calendar invite with the dates. Okay. Too, so we all know. All right. When they're at. All right. So, well, I got a question and I want this for the record. All right. Is this a mandatory event? Yes. I'll let, I'll let Matthew answer that. I would lean towards yes. Yes, I do. Um, because I know, like, at a previous meeting, some people voiced some concern about certain council members not tabling and trying to spread it. But this is, I think, more of a staple one that I would at least highly encourage everyone to view it more towards as mandatory. Well, for Mike is. I have context. Um, if it's a mandatory event that is voted on by this council, and we're sponsoring it, it's mandatory. Uh, it's in the constitution. So, so did we vote on it? Yeah. Okay. We did. Yeah. Thank you. That's how I got the funding for food for finals. Awesome. Thank you. Um, it is two days. If you can only make it one, we'll figure it out because. Obviously, it is finals week and we're all students first, so I don't want it interrupting anybody's finals, but we would like to support our fellow students. Agreed. Um, unless there's any other questions for me. All right. Um, and Naomi put in the chat that there's no updates for the sustainability committee. Um, any open floor announcements or updates? Um, oh. oh, go ahead. You can go first. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Um, so it was brought to my attention by quite a few students, actually. Um, I don't know if y'all noticed this, and I do not care that there is, you know, let me just say it. Okay. Basically, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but for the Ukrainian war, when it broke out, we got a email from the university saying, you know, we stand with you, like, we support you, here are our services, yada, 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 right? So, but what's going on with Congo, Sudan, Palestine, and Israel, we've never gotten an email. Now, granted, I understand that it was unanimous for Ukraine and, you know, unanimous, quote, unquote, whatever, um, to send support, right? But that doesn't mean that our university can take a politically neutral standpoint and present just an acknowledgement to its students about having support for them on both sides of them, on both sides of everything, whether it's Palestine, Israel, Congo, today, they have not released any kind of statement. And I find that very unacceptable. So there is something being done. Um, I currently am working with a plethora of things right now to figure it out. Um, I will give you more updates when I have updates to give you. Um, but I just thought that y'all should kind of keep that in mind while you're doing things and walking around campus. Um, 
you know, because everybody is going through a lot right now. But it really sucks that only one group of students got acknowledgement and support and not a whole plethora of other students, especially students who are also considered minorities. So just keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you for that, Naomi. Andrew? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if y'all um, noticed like the email that I sent out yesterday, but one of the students reached out to me talking about a idea of potentially getting a new bus route started to take students from the Auraria campus to the Union Station. Um, obviously having more options would be better. We already know that there is like a, a light rail um, line, the W line, I believe, that takes you to the Union Station yeah. from by where Illus is, is. But um, this, bus route, but route, this bus route <laughs> basically um, pick up students uh, by the ball arena, which is right across the street, um, maybe a little closer to campus, you know, that's something that's still in the discussion, but um, they brought up the idea. They want us to help them with that, and um, they want to come in next week to give us the proposal and potentially get um, CCD and CU Denver to also help them out. And then, yeah, um, we also mentioned that for SACAB, that it's something that they can talk about there and bring it up to them so they can get like an agreement from AHEC and also from the university at um, RTD as well. Yeah, so right now, um, they said that they've only mentioned the proposal to Larry Sampler. And Larry had mentioned to that or advised that student to come talk to um, student government and then also try to get um, student government from CCD and CU Denver because, of course, it's not just MSU Denver. Students are going to be using the this new bus route, but it's potentially going to be all um, Auraria campus students. So as of right now, um, they're not necessarily partnering with anybody, but they're trying to reach out to people, to students and um, committees and stuff to try to get more people on board and get more support on it. So I, I'm asking for the place that I work for, side of here, the owner of the building was continuing to uh, put a lot of money into the rebuilding of Union Station and like the reconstruction. Mm -hmm. So that might be something we can look at. Um, but would you be willing to put me in contact with this student if so can come with me? Yeah. I got I will send out an email later today uh, talking about that. Uh, if we do, these people are private developers and that's gonna require a lot of push from us. So we are willing to take this project. Okay. Any other open floor announcements? All right. Uh, faculty and staff senate. So regarding a previous Regarding a previous issue on the uh, grad students not being informed that they have to drop their classes, uh, they are faculty. Faculty Senate is working on a plan to make sure that the students get all students in the school get automated uh, notifications. Um, the second read for the veteran tuition happened, so that's going to be loaded in. Those are the highlights that are happening. They're still just doing multiple readings, making sure they're not polishing things. That's all I have. Is John here? John is not. He was in JSSB and then he discussed. He said he was going to come in March. So we'll postpone that if he has any updates. We'll check back in with him if he shows up. I have a motion to the next one, the council chairs. Do we know if Paul's been going to those meetings? That's what I think. Huh? They all mission now. Naomi, I know. What? Why would Naomi? Oh, no, no, Paul. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, what's up? Yeah. Uh, no, Paul, as far as I know, hasn't communicated with me. Um, I don't know about Cassie. You might maybe reach out to her if he's maybe spoken with her on private terms. Um, but as far as I know, no. And I haven't had a meeting the past two Fridays um, with Cassie, unfortunately. 
um, due to like appointments and stuff like that. I just haven't been able to juggle it very well. So um, yeah, but like I said, I also want to take accountability because I also have not taken the time to reach out to Paul as well. Um, okay. So just know that that's also on me. So um, I just literally haven't had the capacity. I know that's not an excuse, but if you want a reason, that's why. Um, yeah. No, no. It is because we're talking about a different, completely different community than yeah, the council of chairs and directors. Board, so that's what I'm going to say. We should not be putting this. Yeah, I think. Oh, my bad. I missed that. My bad. Both can mix them up a little. <laughs> no, my, my question here is I think we should just take this off the agenda because it's here every week. Right. Just cut the fat. Because like, like, I, I think we can motion. Oh, okay. I, will, I will go if someone just gives me the contact. I would like. To I will do the council chairs and directors. I was going to say, right? Do you want to split it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll split it. Yeah. I don't want to remove it entirely because obviously we have a busy committee. Yeah. But if we need to replace the person, yeah. I think it's a quick motion to do that, right? Just to replace. Right. To, at least to make sure that somebody is filling that position, at least reach out. Like, the and anyone can show up. I mean, it's not like it's a designated role for someone to teach that. Like, you all, your participation there could be more than one person who shows up. So, it's not like you necessarily have to. Yeah, that's more of a representative piece versus like yeah. a committee yeah. chair. Exactly. Yeah. It's just like having someone from here there present. Correct. So, like, designee wise, we should remove the halls or everything. And I would motion to do that. I would motion to remove Paul as, as this representative for this committee and appoint Kristen and Danny as interims. Yeah, at the very least, interims, I would agree. Yeah. There's like two. Uh, I second that. Here, let me restate it. Um, so we're, the motion is to, to vote. Wait, what? The motion is to remove Paul as our. Representative for the Council of Chairs and Directors and appoints Kristen and Denny as the interims. All right. Do we have a second? Uh, nice. All right. So, all those in favor of um, at least temporarily replacing Paul um, with interim of Denny and Kristen, do you have something to add? Is your motion temporary? What do you mean? Because you said interim. No, they're the interims. Paul's also the interims. Probably until next semester, so we can rehash our rehash rules. I'd say. Okay. So. Okay. They um, would be. They would be uh, moving forward. They would be the representatives. All right. So we're voting to remove Paul, and from the Council of Chairs and Directors, and replacing the representatives with Denny and Kristen. Um, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Others opposed? Any abstentions? It passes. So then Dr. Brown will connect with Denny and Kristen to get the contact and get that going. Yeah. And Kenny, can you notify Paul? All right. Thank you. Um, Transitional Leaders Committee. Yes, um, as finals approach and um, the break approaches, every school is independently <laughs> working on their own things. As of right now, I do not foresee us meeting until next semester when spring semester starts. Um, as far as any other updates, I will try to reach out before the break starts for uh, working with CCD and the EBT machine. See if um, uh, Leo has made any progress or if he has any updates on that uh, subject or matter. And that is it. All right. And I just want to pause and recognize um, it's about two minutes before public comments. Okay. If I fit that in and then Sorry, open the floor. Um, so I met with Preston Davidson this week. Hopefully, I um, So I asked about our questions on why is there not student housing provided provided on the the lot, the ballpark lot, 
And apparently AHAC has in the contract there is a mandatory clause that they have to monetize from the from the, the land. Uh, the vision is sort of oh, very much, sorry, uh, at urban campus where you don't see where the city starts and the campus begins. Um, so they think that by having uh, uh, private companies, you know, coming in and then people can come and invest. It, that, that's what's going to help the campus. Uh, there is a lot. Uh, it is but sort of by AJSSB that does have, uh, there are plans for it to be, be student housing. So they are looking into it. That is the information I got. Yeah. Yes. The reason why, so what they're going to do is they're probably going to put like a shopping or some sort of monetization yeah, site at the bottom of it. And the reason for that is to make it more monetized, make it more self sustainable in case they're paying rent in the land and they're, it's going to cost money, which campus doesn't really have um, to do that. So that's, that's the reason why like the Timmons side would monetize as well to pay off. Right. So it's not that's normal with most projects. Yeah. The, well, just because we had so many questions last time about why student housing wasn't, or why are we? It's in, student housing is happening. I mean, it's it is. But not, not as quickly as we want. Not in that specific lot. Yes. That was a discussion of why in that specific lot there was no student, student housing provided. Uh, so those are, those are the answers I got. Okay. And it is one o'clock, so we are open. Then to public comment, if anybody mm -hmm. wants to talk, I think they're coming in to speak yeah. to us. I just scheduled time. Oh, see, see you. Um, good seeing as it doesn't look like there's public comment. If anybody comes in, we'll give them space. Um, but we can go on with advisor updates. Sure. Um, so advisor updates actually, I just have your microphone. Just a little while ago, I wanted to. Um, just propose and see how you all feel about for our I'm thinking next week is the last meeting because again folks are on right am I correct? No, we're we're only three back we're talking about doing a resolution to two weeks on graduation. So we oh. um, started with this. Oh okay. That was kind of graduation. So y'all are planning on meeting on graduation no. day? Yeah. Okay. So just losing would be the last yes. Okay, that's what I needed to know. So I just wanted to propose that for next week, um, I would like to buy everyone lunch um, and have lunch here like at noon um, before the meeting starts. Just like we made it, y'all made it <laughs> to the end of the fall semester. And thank you all for your service and your leadership and your work. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that's okay and that's okay with you all um, to do that and that you're open to that. Um, and if folks aren't going to be here, that'd be helpful to know. So don't. Over order um, food for that. So that was one thing I wanted to ask. Are you all? I will not be here. You will not be here? Okay. I will not also be here. So it'll be a smaller group, sounds like. Okay. Um, Unless you're set on new. I mean, we can do a different day. It just, that's the logical last day of the semester. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just going to say, is it possible to do it a little later? Well, we'll be gone later, right? Like, because it'll be. It means push the meeting later. So. Oh, push the later meeting later. later? The so, lunch or whatever you're planning. Oh, yeah. I mean, we can do it whatever time. I just that was day. thinking next week. Yeah, that oh. works. Friday of next week, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying. So, I just want to clarify some of the confusion in the chat. You're talking basically supplying lunch for the next meeting. Yeah, either the next meeting or if you all want to do something outside of here. At a separate day of time, and we can just do it in the TSAC office. We could do that too. I don't know what's going to work for you all. Yeah. It will be here till the 15th. So I just want to throw it out there. Okay. And Naomi, we're talking about next week, not the week of finals with graduation, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's not the day we graduate. That's the day we're looking to make the resolution where we don't meet. I'm really confused because I was told that we graduate on December 15th and that we have to be at the Coliseum at like 11 o'clock. 
Not, we're but, talking about lunch on December 8th, which is next Friday. Okay, Kenny. Okay, Kenny put in the chat the 15th, so that's why I was confused. No, Re asked to repeat the date, and is it the 15th? Anyway. But no, we're talking about lunch for next week, December 8th, not the 15th. <laughs> so if anybody's going to be here in person, let Dr. Brown know and go get lunch. All right. Okay. And then since you brought up graduation, Naomi, congratulations. I know you're one of our graduates. <laughs> Um, oh, wait, can I, you say that again? Sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, I'm graduating. Let's give another clap. <laughs> hey, you know, we out here, we out here. It's about to be lit, you know? Just kidding, it's not going to be lit. I have so much more school I still need to do. It's fantastic. Um, congratulations, I'm graduating. I have stole for um, our graduates. Those for both fall and spring. Um, so I know we have some previous TSAC reps also graduate fall, um, but I have those in my office. So Naomi, I will have a school for you um, that says to you would like it. Yo. Um, to get over to the back office. Are you going to invite okay, um, Chad and James and the ones that are really graduating that couldn't run again or no? Can they come? Yeah, they, oh, sure. to come next week? I could do that. Yeah, that'd be fun if y'all don't mind. I think it'd be fun. Don't mind if I invite our past TSAC graduates. And to Taylor. Taylor, Chad, James. Who else? Am I missing anyone? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can invite them to lunch. Woo! Cool. Woo! That'd be fun. Yeah. So um with that, um Naomi, are you will you be serving next semester? I need to Naomi? Talk to Doc. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Um, I'm a little confused with how things work from uh, this UN, but I will talk to Dr. Barone and um, Armando because I need clarification from them before I can like actually answer that. Um, but as when I started, it was a yes, but the scholarship program that I'm interested in, um, I may not be eligible for it if I stay at MSU. So I need to consult them and see how like credentials work. Um, Cause you know, but yeah, so I'll, I, I don't know. I don't know yet. So I'll have to ask Dr. Brown and Armando here after this meeting, if that's okay with you too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, so those are two big things as we're wrapping up the semester. And then the last third thing is I would like to set a date for January for us to come together for at least a half day to do some like planning and strategy and visioning for the final um, term here this academic year and so I um, I'm going to pitch some dates out there um, to see what you all think um, and I want to just gauge should we try to do it on a Friday I know people have travel plans and other things you know or do we wait until school actually starts no I see no on that so we should do it before school starts okay why don't we do it before school starts the week before school starts, and I'll throw out some dates. Does that work? Yeah, yes. Okay. Right now, I'm leaning towards the 11th because my day looks really open on the 11th, and my calendar is pretty booked. So, oh, December of January. January. How does that look to folks? January 11th, because and the 12th is MLK, and a lot of other. Would we? Would we be able to do maybe that Monday or Tuesday, that 11 if I'm in school? Monday or Tuesday, the week before school starts? Yeah. Possibly, but I'm leaning more towards the 11th because it allows us to plan and get speakers and build um, than doing it that first day and Tuesday, but traveling. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Anything else or any, those, those are the three big things on my end. And then finally, um, Armando sent you all an email the other day, just letting you all know that we're gonna be reaching out to folks who have not been um, present at meetings, three or more. And so I've done that personally, reach out to folks and asking them 
um, to meet with me, but also letting them know if they have missed more than three meetings, they will not be receiving their stipend for December. Um, and then we will, so I want to talk to them and evaluate where they are at um, at this point in time. And then, you know, we'll, we'll kind of go from there and determine a path forward. But I just wanted to let you all know that that's the plan. And moving forward, like if you all aren't communicating or showing up to meetings, you know, or have an excused reason why you're not here, that I will continue to enforce that um, regardless of whether the followers were. And you might not receive a stipend either for that that month, depending on when the attendance lacks, or it might be the following, because typically we uh, turn in paperwork for stipend processing by the 10th of the month. And so depending on when the absences are, it might either be that month or the following month. Um, so I just wanted to give you all that as a warning and letting you all know if you're getting used to that, you know. And if you're not, then haven't heard from me, that's good. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Well, quick question for you, Dr. Brown. So for, for asking for excused absences, do we officially just put in the chat? Do we talk to you personally and our mom for Armando or the full we all are accountable to one another, like not just Armando and I. Like I feel like this is a you know, you're accountable to the council. I think if it's personal reasons or things that you're not comfortable you know, sharing with the council, because there are personal things that come up, um, I'm fine with y'all communicating with Armando and I directly, but um, I think it's helpful to let the entire group know so that they're sure. Okay. Any, like, any uh, public comment person? That's a good question. The, a person named Amy joined the, Oh, that's you? Oh, okay. 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 Kind of statement to make. Um, Edward from maintenance told me that so in the office we have the recycle bin and we have the trash can, and someone put some shredded paper in the recycle area. And so he informed us for me to spread the word that anytime when we shred anything, put the shredded paper in the trash bin, not the recycle bin. I mean, logically, you would think recycling, but the reason being is they. Uh, grind the shredded, paper, they grind the uh, paperwork and it causes a problem with the machine when the stuff is shredded. So I just want to let you all know that. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank all right. you. I think we can yeah. invite our guests. Yeah, I think we can invite your guests up if they're ready. <laughs> it's a big group. Yeah. Yes, I can see. Just so I'm not like. Um, no, you can. Thank you. How you doing? Good. How are you? Oh, there's another chair. Oh, that's all right. You good to begin? Yeah. All right. I just want to say first and foremost, thank you guys for giving us some time to just chat with you. Um, it's under my knowledge that you all are a little familiar with the project. Um, part of what we're here to do today is to kind of pick your brains a little bit about this idea of space and student space. We have some questions for you. We have some uh, images we want to show you to hear your thoughts on this project that's in the works. Um, as I'm sure you all are aware, we got some big plans for the 2030 strategic goal. Um, this is part of that um, and ties with uh, student housing that I know you are very concerned about. Um, primarily, uh, I want to give you just a context up before we invite our guests up from uh, Columbia Ventures, the building developers, as well as the architects with SAR. Um, really, I just want to make sure we're all starting from a good baseline understanding what this project is. So for the past two years, we've been working uh, with Columbia Ventures to begin 
conceptualizing this building that's currently going to take place on the Auraria ballpark. It's currently a vacant lot that's sitting um, right next to the Tivoli garage. I'm sure you have seen it. Uh, currently kind of an eyesore. I'm hoping we can beautify it a bit more. But we have been meeting on a weekly basis to kind of begin thinking about this specific floor that the season hub is going to be inhabiting. So this actual building is an AHEC initiative. And Mr. Denver was fortunate enough to have a floor within this to where we can kind of centralize all of our career engagement to bring us all into one space. Um, I do want to clarify that it is not a suitably funded project. This is through private donors as well as the state. Um, this isn't impacting students' funds in any way. Um, this is actually to kind of help us think more long term as we start to develop as a university so that we can still continue to remain competitive with the other universities in the Denver metro area as well as making sure employers have a chance and a pipeline to connect with our students. We've heard time and time again that employers are looking for MSU Denver students to join internships to help out with their projects, but they're struggling to actually connect with the students because as you all know, this is a commuter campus and part of this building is to help us activate this campus even more. So um, I hope that's a, a very brief foundational context. I do want to give it over to our uh, assistant Vice President of Fashion Apprenticeships to kind of share a bit about what the C2 Hub is. I'm sure some of you know, have heard of it, but how many have actually utilized it? Just raise a hand. Question. That was my opening question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done now. I'm going to go sit down. I'm going to sit next to you. I mean, yes. All right. So I, I hope Nan can share a bit about that because it is a very broad program that I'm hoping can be better you know, <laughs> make sense of it so you can understand just the impact of why this is important for our students. Uh, raise your hands again if you've heard of C2 Hub, user services. Okay, cool. Um, well, again, first and foremost, thanks. Thank you for allowing us the time and space to, to take up some of your meeting. Um, and so a couple things about C2 Hub. Um, the first thing that I think about really related to this building is oftentimes I'm, I'm in, the, in the community uh, talking to partners, talking to, I'll see students and they'll say, they'll ask me what, um, what department I work in. I said, oh, it's a classroom of career hub. I was like, oh, well, what's that? I was like, oh my gosh, that's not, not great. Um, and so we start to talk about like, oh, well, it's, you know, where you go to get support for career. And so like, oh, like a career center. And I will say, well, yeah, but so for me, C2 Hub is really much more than just your typical career center. You go in, you get um, your resume done and you get, you know, interview support. It's that. And <laughs> And it really is about making sure that we are integrating all the things that you think about the post-graduation experience. So it might be internships, it might be job shadowing. Our goal from a C2 Hub perspective, working with leadership, working with our faculty, is to make sure that those pieces about post-graduate um, are embedded into your experience as a student all throughout. So not just when you're a senior, I know for when I was way back in the day, when I graduated undergrad, I worked in the career center and I didn't even talk to anybody until I was a senior. So that's a problem. So our goal really is to make sure that your experiences as our students, that you hear about and are engaged with C2 Hub uh, as soon as you step on campus, whether you're a transfer student or be a student, um, a continuing student, that's really, really important. C2 Hub has three pillars to support students. First is our <laughs> student success, which includes our engagement team. Many of you have probably engaged with Dr. Rosie Coble or um, or April as well. And this is really the branch of C2 Hub that is, when you think about career readiness, that's the resume, that's the job shadowing, that is, or that's the um, the job searching. That also might be career planning. What do I, here's what my major is, um, but what does that look like for a job? So that's the, the, the career piece. The success part is really work, working with students that might be a part of a scholarship program, maybe they're in a group a cohort program, how are we making sure that we're supporting those students to make sure that their career outcomes, their academic outcomes are met? The second pillar to support students in the C2 Hub is our faculty engagement team. Um, this group is working alongside our faculty. So as you are in your classes, our role in supporting faculty is how do we make sure that career readiness activities are embedded into your curriculum? The third branch is our um, industry partnership team. And this is the group that is out there hustling to make sure that they, they are connecting with uh, employers, with industry partners to bring them to campus to connect. 
making sure that we're providing opportunities, whether it's internships, um, it might be a, um, you know, a job in a specialized field, but they're out there right now, every single day, making sure that they are bringing employers to campus to engage with you, recruit you, and to employ So those are the three branches of the classroom to career hub. And I know many of you have, again, engaged with them, probably been to uh, you know, a career lab, but our role really is to make sure that your experience related to career um, you see that every single day. And so uh, a lot of reason why at least I went to college because I wanted to get a job. So we want to make sure that that's present um, as we're thinking about this building. One of the things that uh, I feel like this building will allow us to do right now, C2 Hub is spread out. So my team is on the, the first and second floor of the C2 Hub of the JSSB. Then we've got another group that's over in the admin building. Our career engagement team is on the third floor. What I really see this building being able to allow is, um, number one, all of our team being in one space. And so when students are coming into the building, they can get all of those services, sort of like this one-stop shop. They can connect with those employers. They can connect with career engagement. They can get support with scholarship support all in one. That's the goal. That's the vision. That's why I appreciate it. That's why I'm excited about um, this project. And hopefully you all are excited about it. And love to learn about your questions and, and feedback as well. Yeah. So. Um, if I may, I would like to invite up the our team here to talk a little bit more about it, or if you can send your oh, chair is actually sure, there's a question online. Oh, sure, sure. Um, Naomi. Uh, yeah. So I'm kind of confused. So are you saying that the new building is going to have all of the scholarship programs located in one area, so that way you guys can keep track of it? Like we're talking the scholarships that are in the business school, the hospitality, the STEM or the science building, STEM, whatever. Um, the like nursing program like all the scholarship programs are going to be in one centralized area and also the second question i thought all the c2 hub okay wait so i don't i'm saying this isn't a question <laughs> sorry my question is are all the employees of the c2 hub in the jssb now and is the previous c2 hub cleared out or like like are your employees spread out sorry those are two questions Okay, let me answer. Let me, if, if I don't answer part of your question, please, please. And it was Naomi, correct? Yes, thank you. So that's a great, great question. I appreciate that clarification. So it's only the scholarship programs that are within the classroom to career hub. So under student support and retention. So that's that are um, scholarships like Denver Scholarship Foundation, that might be Reicher. So it's only specific scholarships that are currently within the classroom to career hub. Your question is a great one. So it's not, so I know that hospitality has their own. Um, the health scholars has their own, those scholarships will not be um, coming within this building. Does that answer the first part of your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. And then I think your second question is, was around um, where C2 Hub currently sits. Was that your question? No, it's more like, um, sorry, I could, now I can say it more clearly. <laughs> um, are all the C2 Hub employees and programs all in the JSSB right now? Or are they more spread out still? So I guess. Yeah, they're. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering because I'm like, if they're already in a place where they're car, 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 mint, car I can't see the word, but like when they're all in one place together, <laughs> um, like, so yeah. why, why so do we need to put them somewhere else? You know. So they're 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 currently spread out. They're they're current. So we we've got some. Um, some are on the first floor, some are on the third floor, some are in um, the Tivoli, some are in the admin building. So they're all peer mentors and uh, so, they're, so, they're, so they're, they're spread out. So the idea, which is, it's a great thought is, uh, or a big question is the idea is to be able to all of those different fields within C2 Hub to not be dispersed through the first floor, the third floor, the Tivoli, the admin building, so that when you walk in, when students walk into the new building, all of those services, all of those supports are on the same board in the same space with the, um, the idea that we would be being in industry partnerships to, um, you know, when a student walks in is like, hey, from 12 to two, we have this um, industry partnership team from three to four. This is um, you know, this different industry. Right now, that's tough to do in the current space. Is that, is that helpful that I answered your question? What did I miss um, as you're thinking about yeah. my answer? No, no, no. I think you're, I think that makes perfect sense to put it all in one place. I guess my like biggest concern is that like, what communications do you have with all the other departments and like schools, um, like hospitality, business, science, uh, letters, arts, all that, um, nursing, how do you like, what connections are you guys making with them? Because 
You know, we have students coming to us all the time that are like, yo, we can't find money. Like, it's really hard to pay for school. You guys only have the scholarship page on MSU Denver, which those scholars are very limited and go away very quickly. Um, and they're usually only offered to like maybe two or three students and out of 17,000, like how is that helping them really pay, you know? So I guess the idea here is how are you guys going to come together with all these different departments to advertise these scholarships so then we can advocate to the people who are giving these grants that fund these scholarships to get them more money for each department to disperse to more and more students. Because if we don't advertise them, they can't disperse them more frequently, you know? Yeah, and I think what you're, how I'm interpreting your question is what, what are the opportunities um, for collaboration to create awareness about the resources within CTO? Specifically, what I'm hearing, Naomi, is around funding and scholarships. Um, and so yes. what we currently, is, I have that right? Yes, but it's not just scholarships within CTO Hub. I'm talking about scholarships between the, between the entire university. That's the biggest yeah. problem that we have on campus, oh, I think, right now when sure. it comes to funding and finding scholarships, is students don't know where to look because they're not freely advertised. And if C2Hub is to be here to help with, you know, career or career and scholarships and things like that, I don't think it should be limited to just what's available at C2Hub. I think it should be at least a place where they can know about all these scholarships collectively within all the departments. So that's why that's one of my questions. How are you going to collaborate with every department to be able to understand and market these scholarships to students? Well, so we work closely with with financial aid office. So our office of financial aid um, communicates about the scholarships for all of our students, and then each scholarship is is dedicated to whether it's a specific focus. So, for example, it might be, uh, for example, a Reischer scholarship that's dedicated to transfer students. So our office of financial aid has that information on their website, um, and so every year the office of financial aid communicates about, um, hey, here is you know scholarships are open please take a look um, at these scholarships that are available. Additionally, one of the areas that, to your point, how do we get better at that? Uh, part of that is word of mouth, getting it out to students as well. It's like, hey, here are the scholarships that are available. Here's what the requirements are. Maybe it might be more regular meetings with, with this group as well. Um, how do we get that information out? And it's working with our, our academic advisors that you're seeing. It's on a website. So would love your feedback, obviously, from this group is, you know, where are we missing the boat? Where would you like for this information to land? So yes, C2Hub um, does have scholarship support for unique scholarships, but your larger question, because that might only be, it's 13 scholarships that, that the Classroom to Career Hub um, supports. But what your question is, and it's a really great question, is how, do, how does the university communicate about all of the scholarships? Where are we as a university um, lacking in getting that communication out? And that's a really great question, I think, having the opportunity to talk with financial aid about that, and then learning from you, where are spaces that we can do that? Really quickly, if I may, uh, I do need our guest time. Yeah, yeah. Have yeah. yes, thank you. About the project. Yeah, um, and we're happy to continue the discussion with you all. With and, and Naomi, I'll, 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 and I'll drop my email in the chat as well. So if folks have questions about general scholarships, just feedback, please make sure you reach out. Yes, for sure. Thank you so much for answering that. Yeah. Great. I'd love to echo the same thing, though. Appreciate you. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for letting us um, join your meeting here. My name's Amy. I'm an architect with SAR, um, working alongside my fellow architects and then um, with Ben on the development side. So thank you for having us. Um, we have a slide deck here that kind of looks broad picture about the, the site and the project and we'll share a design update and then kind of ending on some interior updates and really wanting your feedback on how this space can amplify the work of the C2 Hub. So the site that we're looking at is located at the north end of campus, um, actually just right outside the window here. Um, it's really at the nexus of um, thriving and potential and future neighborhoods in the city. So we have the existing Lodo and Union Station neighborhood, but right across Auraria, there's going to be a future. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. Um, the future ball arena redevelopment and the river mile. So um, the site is really at the nexus and heart of the city. We are also adjacent to the future 5280 trail that you see here in green. Um, and that trail will, will run through campus and run right in front of the site. 
the ball field site that we're looking at will have two buildings. We, we're focusing on the office building that's shown here on the right, and then there's also a future residential building. And the residential building on the ground floor will have um, the Auraria ELC, which is on Colfax relocated to this site. The orientation of the buildings, we are um, maintaining a strong connection with Auraria campus and making sure that it um, has porosity between the campus and adjacent site context. So the two buildings there is a courtyard space and an activated paseo in between. The early learning center on the residential building will have a, um, a large area designated for outdoor play. Um, so a portion of the courtyard space will be designated to that ELC play area. The office building on the ground floor, there's planned to be a large community space anchoring the south end of the office building adjacent to Tivoli Quad. So the portion of the courtyard that is not early learning center play will be an activated paseo. We kind of see this space um, being a flexible um, community space where you can have farmers markets or just outdoor gathering events for the, the campus and the, the broader community. The early learning center um, play area, we're excited about have, having those young voices in, in that courtyard and really um, having early learning through higher learning on, on site. The building will be adjacent to the 5280 trail. Um, so we'll have a strong community anchor on, um, on the ground floor and the MSU C2 hub will be located on the second floor of the building. So we are really seeing a, a strong connection between the, those two floors of the building. This is a current concept for the interior layout of the MSU floor plan. Um, so kind of focusing on having more collaboration and um, classroom spaces on the south end. This plan, Tivoli Quad, is on the, the right and Auraria is on the left. Um, and then having more of the um, offices centered toward the interior and having open, open style workspaces along the perimeter. We've committed to having mass timber as the construction type. And so it'll be an exposed wood structure, like you can see in this interior rendering. We've been referencing quite a few other mass timber projects and open workspace precedents um, to help us imagine what this space could be. And so really what we're wanting to talk through today is understanding how, how this space can feel inviting and welcoming for MSU students um, in the, the C2 hub and really creating that community impact and, and supporting the community. Um, we are a lot of a uh, first gen school, a uh, uh, first gen, uh, yeah, we have, we have a very diverse community. So I think um, that in mind, and that this might be just a superficial under optics, where there should be some students and some, uh, some diverse artists that should be represented within the space. If you're talking about the atmosphere, divided. Space. Um, Rhea, something? Yes. Rhea? Yeah, hi. I just wanted to um, ask for all these spaces for people to do work. Um, I can see people being in there for an extended amount of times and then space is used up. Is there going to be like an electronic booking system with a maximum amount of time available, or have you thought any? that far in advance about something like that? Yeah, sounds yeah it's something we are considering one of the analogs uh, previous building that SCR had actually designed does have this system over at Blue Wilson. I can add on to that too. Uh, this is Joe Shop and the director of plan design structure for MSU. We've been uh, Piloting a program called SCADA right now. Uh, we have been building ASSD. It's exactly that. It's a scheduling software that for these hot testing spaces, uh, in the time, several weeks in advance, we 
what they are, uh, but that's the pilot we're testing right now. It's SCADA, S-K-E-D-A is the name of the program. I'll go check it out, but yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're using now. That's a good success. Um, so I think that we might be able to implement that here as well. If I can just follow up really quick first before somebody else talks, just to follow up with that, I work at Kewitt Corporation, which is down in Lone Tree, and we have brand new buildings there and this kind of booking system. And sometimes when we're working on proposals, people will book out a space for weeks, and it might be a really ideal space that other people would like to try, but somebody's made it a favorite, and so everybody else too bad. So that's why I would like you to also consider limitations and and the time frame from which you can book you know an appropriate period in advance and for a continuous amount because those things in my corporation can become a problem just so you know <laughs> thanks uh, that's one of the issues i've run into with this is people not being really considerate of how often they schedule and if they're not going to use it canceling it uh, so that that is definitely an issue and we haven't figured out how to address that, but uh, it's probably the top thing on our list. Um, it, it's space management, and a lot of that is going to be sort of pushed down to uh, the administrative group that's in here. So uh, if it's the C2 of people having to do that, that's, that's kind of where we have to put it. Because we don't want to be heavy handed and like police like and go by and check and see who's in your desk, who's not. Uh, at the same, you know, same time, we want to give people a little freedom for scheduling. So it's sure. going to not that we see it there, but we're, we're definitely looking at that. Well, thank you. It looks great. Yeah. 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 Um, I think as a commuter campus, we don't have a lot of places to study. So that's something that we looked into that we could have. We can stay until very, very late at night. Some of us, you know, sleep very little of it. So, um, and then sometimes we were not like, sure. we were also looking yeah. at the how to implement like sleep chairs sometimes. But that's something we were looking to as a student other. Um, so, this might be a good use for that space as well, you know, to have some space for our students like, so they can rest. They were, um, yeah, that's space to work. And then John I have has a, a direct comment. I have a direct comment on that. So I got a solution with some of the scheduling. Well, the first off, I think we should hire some student workers with the time so that people can have a person in place instead of doing the electronic scheduling. So someone could be there to actually do that. And I like to see the time during finals week that it be extended, maybe even 24 hours of some days or stuff like that so the having workers in place so it won't be so automatic that it, when per, people walk up on that moment we'll have people signed up and it'll keep us socializing as students too that's it we we did use student employees to, to do this pilot program and mm -hmm. that's what they were doing and then who's who doesn't not yes. um, but yeah, like i said there's a balance there between being too much involved in people's business and seeing who's who has butts and seats. Yeah. And uh, so, thank you for that. Yeah. To, uh, to the uh, the sleep question, it's funny that that came up in part of our master planning efforts. Uh, we looked at how do we keep students on campus? How do we make it comfortable for them to stay in longer hours? And one of the things that was brought up is those sort of like sleep chambers that you see yeah. in places. Is what yeah. Whatever, five bucks and you can mm -hmm. inside and get a nap or whatever. Uh, that is definitely on the table. So if okay. anybody has other ideas that are like that, uh, we're all ears. Thank you. And we have a couple more questions. I wanted to just address the, um, the third part of that question, which was uh, how do we study spaces that are comfortable? All hours of the day. I think you mentioned this, but we just want to highlight the idea that this building is activated and that people are coming out of it all hours of the day, all days of the week. So it's no longer the eight to five, five to Friday. The ground floor, I don't know if you're just put that in there, but we're, we're looking for ways to create either a coffee shop or, or maybe even dedicated breakout spaces for students to meet. And, and it, it would be open all hours of the day. So that's like a really important part of the 
this product if you want the that will be needed for it to succeed. Okay. Mike? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I have two questions. I'm not sure who these would be directed towards. The first part, I love that we're finally putting CG Hub together. It's like a puzzle. Um, my one critique and of the CTO currently is no one knows where it is. Now I'm an accounting student, so I know where the CTO is, but like engineering students who don't go over to admin don't know where it is either. Now the question is, this new space isn't exactly in the view of students either for MSU. If anything, it's closer to CU Denver at RD. Um, do you think this new location change will increase engagement of the CTO? That's the first question. I'm not sure what I, what I direct that towards. I think it's a great question. And um, I think to some of us, and maybe uh, if I just, like echo that back to you all, but our hope is that this maybe shared the sort of site for the building game between the campus and kind of the broader community. But that would be one really important way to bring more visibility to this and to MSU in general. And uh, I think it's possible in that chamber because it is a bigger campus. Maybe most of the students are actually coming from the Osprey market, maybe less from from our ground stop side of campus over time, right? That, that's part of the future development of Denver. I think our hope and the way that the site has evolved is to bring great visibility possible to one Can you is that one in there? Yeah. I don't have it in this deck, but we do have an image where it shows that second. Yeah, basically that one has on that second floor is the C2 finance objective at the quad area to sort of draw people in. The theory is that if we have everything co-located on one floor in one location, it's sort of permanent and not like this constant issue between the spaces that they're in now. Uh, over time, people need to know what it is, where it's at, how to get there, and also know about those those areas downstairs that are welcome. Let's go to the other side. Yeah, let's go to the other side. I have a second question. Yeah. I have a second question. Yeah. Okay. We're going to have a more broad problem. This is the tap challenge to start reminding our students the space that we have. And if we start to spread ourselves out, I think get our students to get a lot of great piece of space that often a lot of students don't go to because they have no needs. I think this is again encouraging that type of trip. A little more block across the other campus. Conversations and being made and having potential conversations, how do we get better at that? So, you know, a lot of stuff because of these, but you need to go back to these questions just around the fairness. So, that allows us to know how we get better. So, thank you for answering that question. You may be getting the interest. Good question. Good question. And then, question on that too. Then, but go ahead first. Oh, uh, my second question was well, related to the same. We shared a direct comment there. Who? To your last question though, will I direct comment? Just ask you. Are you sure? I mean, I just want to make sure we're not. All right, to address pretty much what you said earlier about students not knowing where this new building is. I mean, MSU Denver can always advertise it on pamphlets and when it comes online, when it's finally constructed. It can be passed through the deans or all the schools and then passed to the professors and directly to the students. I think that'd be a great way to get the current population to um, realize that there is a new building if they don't walk that way. Uh, but that was just a quick direct comment to like potentially help with that situation of students not being aware. So that, um, I've heard conflicting stories about the daughter. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I don't think most students do, but that's just my opinion. I'll make that clear right now. That's, yeah. no, that, that's kind of what I've heard. So if you have other ways that you think would be good for us to use to get information out, to share that with people, uh, I'm relatively new here. I guess you're new. Um, so this is just nice. Last six months now, that about the runner, so we can try to 
out there, then I heard exactly what you're saying is that that's not the reality. So, any help there that you can give us? For I'm working on a potential solution to that outside of the council, so I'll try and snag your information and yeah. we'll, we'll chat about that more in depth later. I want to keep the focus. We have a couple more questions. Okay. My second question was related to spacing as well. So there's the one issue we fight here is circuit with is spacing on campus. And this new project opens up, I count, three spaces on campus. Um, do we know what the plans are for those spaces on campus? Okay, so we have several other projects that are going on. Our own, on Sim Labs, here's one of them. Another one is Project P, which will be starting in March, which is an ANET project. Uh, it's going to shut down a bunch of, shut down uh, less classrooms, separate classrooms, and get to those people. Right now, we're going to see this flux of moving people here and there. So the short answer is no, we don't know who's going to go there. Uh, we got to figure out these other immediate space issues that we're having. Uh, so, yeah. And then we had one last question with Naomi. Yes, awesome. All great questions, y'all. I just had, um, I feel like when we were doing developments of these things, y'all are forgetting whose land you're on. And it's really disturbing. So I kind of want to know, like, what are you doing to get indigenous representation on this potential reparations? Are you going to give them priority to like event booking and things like that? Like, what are you doing to involve the indigenous people of the land that you are building this on? Because keep giving an acknowledgement is the bare minimum and it's not doing anything. Honestly, it's not even worth doing an land acknowledgement if you just continue to do the same wrongdoings you've done for, I don't know, since 1942. You feel me? So, or I'm sorry, 1492, my damn dyslexic ass, my bad. Um, yeah, so I'm just wondering, what are you doing to involve indigenous peoples of this particular land um, in incorporating them in this building process? I'll, I'll say something that we have kicked around is, uh, we haven't done that outreach yet. We're starting with you all to get those connections. Um, but one of the things we were contemplating in the ground floor is, some of this master planning that we're doing. Uh, we discovered that there used to be a river that comes like, right through there that used to tie into uh, Cherry Creek. I can't remember the title, Cherry Creek River, but flat. Uh, so we were looking at doing some art that we would sort of spread out through here that would sort of draw attention to hey, this used to be a indigenous land, used to be a river here, sort of going back to the roots of this land. So that that's just one of the ideas we looked at, but um, we have it in our minds, and we're happy to make those connections with the right people, uh, and that's why we're here. Okay, so just so I'm, because it, it kind of broke up, I just want to make sure I'm hearing this clearly. So your first line is to give a piece of wall art mural to the indigenous people. Is the first right. idea? Is that right? That's just what we've looked at. I mean, we really have just gotten into doing the floor plans for the second floor. So we started looking at the uh, and So that's why we have this outreach as we're here developing the plans. So, Got uh, you. Okay, and then, so within to, that, oh, sorry, it keeps going back and forth. My bad. Continue, my bad. Right, no, we, we're, that's why we're here is uh, to get those contacts. Like, you, you know, the, the teams that you're talking about, uh, we are happy to talk to them and get ideas because we're in the idea phase right now. So this is the time to start implementing this. Okay, got you. So just to be clear, you guys have not done any indigenous community outreach this far yet, right? I don't want to take questions. No. It's been very internal at the moment just because we have to figure out what to do to make it feel. Essentializing the space, but again, this is the outreach part that we're doing now. Uh, and you all were really spending. Okay, I mean, I would just give you guys a word of advice um, to better help Indigenous students want to come to this university. You have to make them feel included and wanted, and that's not when you develop a plan and then um, include them afterwards. Part of collaboration with the Indigenous peoples when you're on their land is to talk with them as the process is happening, you know, and of course we understand the intentions here are more or less good, right? But 
I highly suggest that you speak to the Native and Indigenous Student Program Coordinator, Desiree Richards, and see if she has any ideas or community members that you could talk to about how we can maybe provide inclusion and collaboration with the community that is here. Because if we continue to do these things as an afterthought, we're going to continue to be the afterthought as shown in history time and time again. We're very underrepresented here. And this building with no representation other than a mural is just another slap in the face. And that's not going to help enrollments of Indigenous students. It's definitely not going to help retention. And then it's also going to help other minorities here, which we are in MSI HSI, to see that once again, we are underrepresented. So I understand that you guys, this may not have even been like a first thought. So like, it's no one's fault. But colonializations, of course, I'm always going to blame it on a colonization. It's just me who I am as a person. But I just want to urge you guys to please consider doing this instead of waiting um, till the project's done or the ideas are set in place. Um, and just find these community members, talk to the people at the university. To, like I said, Desiree Richards, a great point of contact um, to get people who are in the indigenous community involved in this because they deserve it through the trauma, through the generational trauma that's going to continue to go on, they deserve to be a part of a project this big at an institution that is going to serve them um, in higher education. So I really appreciate you and everything that you're doing. So thank you guys so much for letting me, um, you know, voice that. Yeah, just, you know, I'll just uh, answer a quick question there. Is, um, the, the intent is to deliver something at this stage that is generating conversation. Um, we're not too far along in plans that we've just left people out intentionally. So we wanted to have something that we could give you that so you can visualize what is possible here. So thank you for the comments. Um, and like I said, that, that's exactly why we're here is to make those connections before we get too far along in plans. Do you have other comments? I wanted to be uh, aware of the time and wanted to ask if it's possible to steal a little bit more of your time to so ideas just maybe five ten minutes more i don't know if you guys can do yeah that speaker's been made aware that uh, they'll have to come back a little later be better to have come back to another conversation or that i'd say so if they're if they're willing to do that yeah. yeah, we're here. Yeah, Chris and I are on campus every day, so we can we can take comments. I will read some parts here. If you want to email me, or get some thoughts yeah. if you want us to include. Could we sort of just open in an email? Just have a breakdown on the slides, and we also have a Yeah, yeah. We don't have to tell everyone to make it a Um. Yeah, we could just have an email with things for the for the department. <laughs> that would be what they get for Yeah, that's what they can do. Yeah. Real quick. And one idea on that, if uh, if y'all are um, interested, if you happen to read this board here. Okay. And uh, maybe now you have a little bit of context to go with that. And if, if there are other ideas, these represent that open house that was hosted here earlier this morning. Oh. And um, so some other students and faculty offered some thoughts here, and we'd love your thoughts as well. Okay. So if you'd like to just keep them and so yeah. put some thoughts. We'll uh, the sticky notes on the side. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. Appreciate that. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, appreciate well, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think we need records in the car. Thank you. Do you guys have anything to think about us? We do? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I think there's a connection. Yeah, if you have any other thoughts, basically, what we want to have something. It looks like it's farther along than it is. Don't leave any side Thank you. I had it wrong. Well, I, I, okay. well, I don't have to say what they but you guys are accepted. So, what? Well, um, what you guys are doing is that the GTA. Uh, the GTA. So 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 the GT
That's why. That's why. So that's what that's there. Awesome. Yeah. Be in touch. Send me ideas. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. <laughs> we come back together for our next speaker. All right, I think we have enough. Um, what was your name again? Right. And you're That's why you coming to us talk about the Phoenix Center? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry about Do we have everyone back? Yeah, we still wait a few minutes. You can yeah. Get back together. All right. So. Yeah, you're totally good. This is a easy conversation. Yeah, it's our office. Actually, I'll touch them. Yeah, I'll just take Do we have these in our office? I'm sorry, we have these in our office. I have one for a Well, I mean, of course, you might just keep the ones you gave us and if someone, yeah. Thank you, Josh. I think it's in your stickers and stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. You want one? Yeah. 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 That's what they all say. So I have that. Yeah. It will. Sorry. No, no, you did. All right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to say, you're good. Chat, just step to the side. Sure. All right. So, we have a few minutes in your crew to talk to us. Um, floor is yours. Awesome. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for allowing me to come in in a major meeting today. Hopefully, I'll be doing an ovation. Um, my name is Rachel, pronounce you, and I'm the Violence Prevention and Education Program Manager at the Phoenix Center of Area. And I'm just here to talk with y'all for about 20 ish minutes about our office and the services we can provide the folks on campus. Awesome. Um, so, in this presentation, I'm going to talk to you all about the history of our office and why we need to be because we run all of the resource requests on the campus. I'm going to give a quick overview of our mission, talk about what interpersonal violence is, so, what are things we can support folks with. And talk about our advocacy services and our violence prevention services. And so before we begin, I do want to acknowledge talking about interpersonal violence can be a pretty sensitive topic for folks. You yourself may be a survivor, or you may have folks in your own lives who are survivors. So I do want to acknowledge that and let folks know that if you need to doodle to try and get this information in, if you need to step out with water, go to a jumping jack, you're not going to offend me. That's totally fine. Just do whatever y'all need to do to take care of yourselves during the next 20 ish minutes. Um, then I also do my best to use inclusive language because while we are talking about specific identity today, uh, interpersonal violence does impact all of us, but specifically folks with different and very specific identities like folks of color, trans folks, and et cetera. Uh, so I just want to keep that in mind as we're talking about this topic today. Um, also, I want this to be a non judgmental learning environment. So if I say a word and you're not sure what that means, uh, I want you to feel brave and feel comfortable to ask me whether that's in this space with all of us together or just coming up to me afterwards. Um, I don't want anyone to worry being excluded from this conversation or from this knowledge as I'm giving this presentation today. And then just having your cell phones on silent so we don't unintentionally distract her with protecting that was really Is there anything folks would like to add before I talk more about the Yeah, so as I mentioned, this the Phoenix Center of Area hasn't always been a resource for folks on campus. So we didn't actually come to be until 2009. 
Um, our office was created after the murder of an MSU Denver student named Abigail Robertson. So she had just turned 21 the day before she was murdered by her ex-boyfriend. Um, they hadn't met when she was a freshman here at MSU Denver. Um, he was like a knockoff of like a resident assistant at one of the off-campus housing units. They started dating. She ended their relationship and he became very possessive, he started stalking her, harassing her. Um, and it led to her needing a protection order against him. And even when she had that protection order, he continued to stalk and harass her. Um, and unfortunately, the day after her birthday, um, after he found out she was in a new relationship with someone else, he came to her home, shot her four times, and stabbed her over 60 times. Um, I don't share that story to make it like a shock factor or anything like that. But I do share that because interpersonal violence is very real and very lively on this campus and really does impact multiple folks, not just staff, just students, but staff members as well. Um, so I don't know if y'all remember if there was any communication around Kat or Leo. Um, in 2021, she was a student and faculty member. Um, she was murdered by her husband. Um, when they separated, he had gone to her home and he stabbed her and her neighbor who had been still for supporting her. Um, but also in 1985, uh, another faculty member at MSU Denver's campus was actually murdered physically on our campus. Um, her ex-husband coerced her into leaving her in the parking lot and then shot her herself. Um, so again, I'm not trying to make this very scary or make this shock value, but it's really important to know because this is actually impacting people in the past on our campus and currently. Uh, so just want to make sure folks are aware of that. Interpersonal violence doesn't just happen because we're on a really beautiful campus. Are we going to talk about or the presentation, is there more of a way to help uh, violence that you're going to talk about? Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, and I'll talk about that in a couple of slides too. Okay. The violence that I've experienced. Okay. Great question. Do you have a question? Nice. Uh, so the Phoenix Center at Auraria, our mission is really long. Um, so just a quick, quick overview, provide education and comprehensive service to ensure survivors may access their particular healing journey, work to mitigate the impact of interpersonal violence on their pursuit of goals, and create a trauma-informed and prevention-focused campus environment. So very long, but that just says we do intervention and prevention services for folks on campus. Uh, we are updating that mission, so it won't be that confusing and long in the future. Um, so like I mentioned, we're going to define interpersonal violence. Does anyone know what that means and wants to share out what they understand that term to be? Yeah. Uh, I wasn't sure if my was raising his hand. Just sure. um, interpersonal violence is usually like between two people. Sometimes they're in a relationship. Sometimes it could be other things. <laughs> um, it could be like emotional or verbal abuse. It could be physical abuse. It could be like uh, manipulation or someone having an uneven power dynamic or they take advantage. Yeah, exactly. So you hit it right on. So normally interpersonal violence, we're talking about violence that's happening within relationships that other people have. So like you said, it could be a current or former partner. But we also support folks who maybe they've experienced violence from family members or within friend groups. Um, so we can support folks who've experienced all different forms of violence. And then you can click again. And we support <coughs> Uh, we support folks with three different forms of interpersonal violence that someone may experience. So sexual violence, so that could be anything from being broke unconsensually to experiencing penetrative sexual violence rape, um, but also voyeurism. So if you have like a PB Tom and someone is breaking into your home and washing you, we can support folks with that as well. Childhood sexual abuse, so maybe you've experienced sexual violence in the past and you're looking for support. We're a great space for that to get resources and information about support services. We also support folks who have experienced relationship violence. So maybe they've experienced violence from, again, current, former partner, family member, and that violence could be emotional, physical, sexual, financial. Um, we even supported folks who maybe they have a pet um, with a former partner, and that former partner could be abusive toward the pet or threatening to take that pet from that other person as a way to maintain power and control over another person. And lastly, we support folks who experience stalking. So stalking can show up in a variety of ways. So hacking into someone's bank accounts to get their information about them or their social media accounts, uh, like the literal following someone around, what we think about a lot when we think about stalking, um, but also gaslighting someone. Do y'all know what that term means, gaslighting? Making people think they're crazy. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just to give a quick example, we actually supported a survivor who they thought they were going crazy because they would park their car in one space. And then all of a sudden, when they come back to it later in the day, it would either move over three spaces or all the way across the parking lot. And it turned out that their ex had made a copy of their car key. And they were intentionally coming on the campus each day and moving their car. And their intention was that <coughs> the survivor was feeling like they were going crazy. They started reaching back out to that person and saying, hey, can you help me keep track of my car? I don't know what's going on, but I keep losing my car even though I know where I'm parking it. So that was that person's way of trying to maintain power and control over that person when that person was no longer easily accessible to them. And then you can click. And these things happen because of a lack of consent going on in that relationship. So this is Colorado's legal definition of what consent is. It's going to be different depending on what state you're in. So for Colorado, consent is defined as a cooperation and act and attitude. So is the person engaging in this relationship or this partnership, they understand what's going on and they're excited and enthusiastic about what's happening. Um, exercise of free will. So does this person feel like they can say no to you? Or do they feel like they're being threatened that if they don't do something for you, that some harm is going to come to them or someone they love? And then is there knowledge of what's going on? So is someone in a mental state where they can consent or say no to something? Or are they unconscious? Are they asleep? Do they have a concussion or have some type of condition where they're not in a space where they can actually say yes or no to something? I know that's a lot. Any questions about interpersonal violence or anything? Yeah, so a lot of scary stuff that our advocates support folks with. And this is where I get more into talking about all the things that we can do to support folks who are experiencing that, or maybe they have a loved one who's experiencing that and they're looking for information and resources for them. So our advocates, we have two of them in the office right now. Um, they provide free and confidential support for anyone who is a survivor or who is supporting a survivor of interpersonal violence. So for confidential resources, all that means is that anything that someone shares with us, we're not going to talk to you about with anyone else unless they share something that someone under the age of 18 is being abused, someone over the age of 70 is being abused, or if there's a concern that if that person were to leave our space, that they're going to go kill themselves or go kill someone else. So as long as they're not bringing anything up around that information, they can tell us anything. We're not going to share anything with anyone unless they fill out specific documents saying you're allowed to talk to this person about this very specific thing for this time period. Um, we also have a 24-7 confidential helpline. So in those brochures we passed out to you all, we have that number on there. And that's available 365 days, 24-7. So we have volunteers who are students, staff, and faculty members who are also confidential. And they can answer any questions you have or talk you through everything if you're or just need some information or want to schedule an appointment with an advocate in our office. We have a chat line that is available Monday and Thursday. It's not a super popular option, but if you are someone or you know someone who thinks that would be safer for them to get in touch with us, you're welcome to check on that chat line and see if someone's available to chat with you. We also do academic advocacy. So if you are a friend is struggling with your coursework because maybe you're trying to process trauma you've experienced or you've been assaulted by someone, and you're not feeling safe going to class anymore because your perpetrator is three seats away from you. You can connect with your professors and say, hey, can we get leniency on this assignment coming up? This person is struggling a bit. Or can we get some attendance leniency? Or can we figure out a way to safely get this person to and from office? Um, so our advocates are able to support with that as well. If someone is wanting information about reporting or what they want to accompany them to court hearings or civil hearings like protection order hearings, as long as our advocate schedules are open and available, they're also able to support folks. We can support folks reporting to our area police department, Denver police, or anywhere in Colorado if they need that type of support. And we also do information referrals. So maybe someone's like, I just want therapy and y'all can't give me therapy because we're not therapists. Mm -hmm. So can you just give me some referrals to therapists and we can do that as well for folks. Um, emotional and crisis support, as long as an advocate's available, if you drop in and say, hey, I'm in crisis and I need to talk right now, an advocate can talk with you right away. Or if someone isn't available, y'all can always call that 24-7 helpline number. And we also support folks who are navigating the criminal system with their victim rights. So folks who qualify under the Victim Rights Act in Colorado, they have the right to be informed about their case, be treated with dignity and respect, and get timely follow-up from the district attorney's office, from probation, from law enforcement. So if someone has a concern, they're like, I've heard from my detective or the district attorney didn't talk to me before offering this plea deal, 
our advocates are well informed about the VRA and they can talk with the advocate, the district attorney, the detectives about that client's case. Um, so we do a lot of really great things for folks, but as I mentioned, there are things we don't do. So if someone comes in and they want specific legal advice, we cannot do that. Uh, we are not attorneys, so we're not licensed to give specific legal advice about cases. We can just give legal information. Uh, we have really great contacts in the community, though, if someone is looking for specific legal advice that we can refer folks to. And like I said, we don't do counseling services. So if someone is looking specifically for therapy, we would be sending out referrals to them for that specific need. And we're only able to work with folks who have experienced sexual violence, relationship violence, or stalking. So if someone comes in and they say, uh, someone hit me over the head with a beer bottle, I had a bar over the weekend, and that was really traumatic and looking for support, we're not just going to like shoo them away immediately. We'll still talk with them in an appointment, but we'll give them resources for other spaces and just make sure they're okay um, moving out of our space before we, yeah. Is there any type of, so a lot of times when people assault people, they've been assaulted themselves or something happened to them mentally. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this is uh, treating the, 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 the person who's the predator, starting to redo the mindset of the predator. Is there anything in place for that? That's a great question. I know we've had for folks who have perpetrated violence who have called and say, I'm trying to look for help, but don't know where to go. Unfortunately, there are, there, there are very limited resources. I think our country, that's a long conversation, but our country doesn't really want to acknowledge that there is a way to prevent violence and we have to look at Because I see systems. it. Mm -hmm. You know, go, instead of punishing the people, find ways to treat them because yeah. a lot of times mm -hmm. a person who is, is raped with somebody has probably been raped and nobody's talked to them and they grew up and didn't get any constant. I'm not saying it makes no, yeah, you do, exactly. Yeah. But we don't think about that. We're so caught up on let's punish the person. Yeah. Or get out there. Yeah. So unfortunately, we don't have specific resources. We just try to tell those folks, well, you know, here are some counseling resources. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where we direct folks. But yeah, we definitely agree. Like, there's a lot more that needs to go to like trying to prevent perpetration and supporting folks who may become perpetrators. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions about what our advocates can do before talking a bit about our prevention work that we do? So this is my wheelhouse in our office. So for prevention education, we provide free um, events, programming that talk about ways to prevent violence and educate folks about interpersonal violence and how to support folks who might be survivors. So we have a bunch of different workshops. So kind of like what you were mentioning earlier, we actually have a workshop called IPV301 that's taken after our IPV 101 workshop. And we go into more detail behind like perpetration, victim blaming, and why does violence keep happening even though we know it's wrong. We also do healthy relationships, media literacy, bystander intervention. So if you're familiar with the five Ds of intervention, we do a whole presentation about what that is. How do we consider identity before intervening in something that we're seeing happening? What are the five Gs? Oh, so that is, they are delegate, direct, distract, document, and delay. Mm. Yeah, so when we're thinking about the five Ds, some things we share with folks is like consider your own identity before intervening in something, because maybe like for myself, I'm a woman of color, I'm not gonna be as comfortable potentially intervening in something where I see maybe it's a larger white man is harassing someone because of my identities. I'm not gonna feel safe doing that. But maybe I'm gonna feel safer if I see another woman of color is harassing someone. I feel like something about that to be safer for me. So we talk about identity in that presentation, those five Ds, and then we allow our participants some time to practice those five Ds of intervention. Um, we also do a supporting survivors presentation. So why did victim blaming happen? And how, what are some phrases we can say to survivors to make sure that they feel believed and support their mental health as they're healing from trauma? We also do custom presentations. So maybe y'all see this and like, well, I want something more specific to like this identity group, or I'm going to talk about this issue that I've seen on campus. You can always email us and we can work something out with you in custom presentation. We've done a lot of those the past couple of years. And then for some annual events we do for Relationship Bounce Awareness Month in October, if you have been on campus for at least this year, uh, the Red Flag Campaign, we put 12,000 flags out there just to bring awareness to the 12,000 survivors on Auraria campus. Um, we also do on our social media a campaign called Creep Cure Cute. So we'll post one to two scenarios a week, and then we will have the Instagram 
part of the well, do you think this is creepy or this is cute? And at the end of the day, we post, this was creepy because of this, or this was cute because of this. So just to help folks get a better understanding of what's appropriate behavior and what could be leading towards stuff in behaviors. And for sexual assault awareness month, we have our clothesline project. So we have all the t-shirts that hang in the activity atria. And it's actual survivors sharing their stories on those t-shirts or memorializing the loved one by a partner or a family member after experiencing sexual violence. And then we have our denim day event that goes along with our consent turn beyond event. So for that event, we just started last year. It was really popular. So that's gonna be a big growth every year. Um, we have folks come to the turn hall. They play at least five games that talk about consent or sex positivity. And then they get to enter into a little giveaway and they can win free sex toys or a gift card um, or little like penis, vagina, flushes. Um, so it's really fun. Keep an eye out for it. We'll start marketing for that in like March, April. Those are just some of our annual events. Any questions about any of the prevention things we do? Um, and then the last thing I'll talk about, we're always looking for volunteers to help us with the bathroom sign that y'all see in the bathrooms. And we're always looking for interns. So interns are for like a full academic year. And for interns, at least for undergraduate interns, they can do what I'm doing today. So giving presentations, doing our social media stuff, helping with planning events and facilitating events. But if you're maybe a master's or graduate student and you're interested in advocacy, we also have graduate advocacy interns who provide that specific support to survivors on our campus. Are they still giving out fever cups at the Phoenix We did just ran out a few weeks ago, but someone here called me earlier saying y'all wanted to do that again when you're looking into it. Someone. So hopefully we can partner with you all so that we can do that again. Um, but they were really popular and folks said it was really helpful having them. Because I gave, I gave them to some women that were interested in upgrades because some women don't know about that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you think women talk to other women, but you don't no. talk to other women. Yeah. And I'm a bold man. I ask women <laughs> questions to educate them. So. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just more cost effective, too, than having to buy tampons and pads. So you know, very poverty real, especially for college students. College is expensive. Um, so it's also a great way to like to save money for folks who menstruate. Any questions about anything I shared today? I know that was quick. I think Gabe or something. Oh, Gabe's mic isn't working. It was Gabe Trujillo. Um, and we look forward and we'll reach out soon. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, y'all. Thank, Thank you meeting. so much for coming by. Sure. Thanks for meeting. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> And at that point, unless anybody else has anything else they want to bring up today, I motion to adjourn the meeting. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you, guys. Aye. Aye. Oh, wait, doc Dr. Um, Barone and Armando, can you guys stay behind for a quick second? They're not, uh, they're not there. They're not here anymore. Oh, lovely. Okay, cool. Thank you guys. Bye. Maybe Armando is? Yeah.